Hi everybody, welcome back to Zephyr's Travels. I'm Randy. And I'm Diane. And this week we are going to talk about trip planning, but first we've got to update our map. So before we head out again, yep, like Randy said, we're going to update our map there of the actually two states. Two, two new states. We didn't two. We, we kind of went through some states that we've been to before, so we didn't really get to add very many new states in this past year. But we did get two new states, and they're on opposite ends of the country. Right. The first being California, which we visited last January. Right. And then we went to the Airstream International, and that was in Maine. Right. So that was a new state for us. So we'll get to add those two new states. So let's start with Maine. The smaller of the two. Yeah, but it's no, it's not a small state. That's yeah, for sure. Here, compared, you hold, to, you hold compared to California. So here's here's Maine up here. And we're add that into our map. Go. Maine was a lot of fun. I think um, you know we did some of the coastal area. We didn't do all of the state. I think there's an opportunity to come back and visit Maine again. But it was a lot of fun to Rally was right around here near uh, New Hampshire. Um, and then we got to go into Vermont and those states again. And now, uh, Biggie, California. Yeah. Yeah. Out there. There we go, California. So, California, what'd you think of that? So yeah, California was a lot of fun. We did a lot. We, um, you know, each place that we stopped, we did stop in some of the major cities, San Diego, San Francisco, LA, and we did a lot while we were in there. And perhaps someday. I would go back. Yeah. I definitely would go back. I, I really enjoyed California. Right. And it's always been a, it's always been a place I wanted to visit and a place I, I would definitely want to go back to. Right. Um, but let's talk about that whole trip because we were on the road for six months. That was a big trip and we actually stayed at over 40 different campgrounds. You know, we went through, let's see, went through quite a few different states. We, we were in New Mexico, Arizona, California, Nevada. Um, obviously we were in through these states here, Indiana, um, Kansas. We spent some time in Kansas. Uh, so we did a lot in that trip and went through a lot of different states. One of the things that I wanted to talk about is planning a trip like that. I mean, that takes a lot of work. And so how do we plan a trip like that? Well, we've got a couple of different apps that we like to use, and I'll go into detail and show you those. But when we plan a trip this big, I don't plan the whole trip at one time. What I like to do is I like to start out with maybe a rolling six months weeks of planning you know definitely have four weeks locked in because you need to get reservations at places it's very difficult especially when you're going to where it's very popular for the winter arizona nevada california these are all very popular places and reservations are a must um you know especially if you want to control your costs right you know i mean you could roll in with no reservations in the arizona and probably find a place to stay to stay but you could be spending $80 a night, and that's definitely out of our budget. Right. We like to keep it around $35, $40 a night. Yeah. So we, we have a, a, I have a way I like to do this, and I like to kind of do it on a, a rolling horizon to what we want to say. That leaves us a little bit of flexibility, but it also makes it so that we know where we're going. Um, you know, the next, our next stop is always planned out and there. We know the distance to that stop, so we know what kind of driving we're going to have. Um, to me, that just makes it a much more comfortable way to travel. And we did pretty good. We had very decent campsites and, yes. and places to stay. We did. We didn't, we didn't really have any place. That we didn't like. Yeah. Yeah. We knew exactly what we were getting at every place we went to. Right. Of course, some were better than others bigger campgrounds from smaller campgrounds more amenities um, you know near water near the bigger cities yeah well let's let me go inside and 
we're kind of I'll show you on the computer how we plan these out what, what the applications are that we I like to use and then we'll come back here and close the video out okay. I want to start out by showing you some of the tools that I use for planning our trips and then we'll go into a trip that we've already created that we traveled last year our trip to California and I'll give you an idea what a, a, a planned out trip looks like at the end but then we'll go and start a trip our next trip actually and I'll kind of give you a highlight of how I work through the different steps and the different app, um, apps that I use to find campgrounds and driving distances and such so we're going to start out with the mapping program and there's a lot of different mapping programs out there that you could use um, you could use Google Maps, you could use Apple Maps, um, MapQuest, there's a number of them. But when I searched and tried these, the problem I had with most of them is they don't allow you to do waypoints very well. Now Google Map does allow waypoints, but it's kind of difficult to really set up a trip with, say, 40 different waypoints. You know, you're going to stop at 40 different cities or campgrounds or however you're, you're mapping out your trip. And it also doesn't have the flexibility to add waypoints in the middle as easily as this other application I'm going to show you. So in searching around, I ended up uh, trying Road Trippers. And Road Trippers is, does have a free version of it, which allows you to create a trip and you can have, I think it's six waypoints added to it. And that worked out great the first couple times I used it. Actually, the first year I used it, I used it at the six waypoint. And what I did is I created a, my trip in sections. So I created six waypoints worth of a trip, and then I ended that trip and started a new trip at that point and went on to the next six waypoints. And it worked okay, but it really what it allowed me to do is to try the program out and see if I liked it. And I did like it. So I ended up um, stepping up and buying the... Um, well, I guess it's a purchasable application, but basically, you know, I, I, I bought the application on a yearly basis. And so I think it's about $30 a year. I'll put that down below and you can check and, you know, verif we can verify that. And my trip last year had over 40 waypoints, and which was great because it, it allowed me to continue on the trip, get an idea what, you know, what the whole trip was. And it also allows me to have a record of that trip when I'm done, the complete trip. You know, start to finish, where, where did we go, where did we stay? You know, I can go back and look at that in the future. And if I would go to California again, I can pick out places we've been to before and move them into the new trip or even sections of that trip because it wasn't just California. We went through New Mexico and Arizona and we went in Nevada. So we had a lot of different places in that trip. In fact, let's fire up the computer here and we'll show you that trip. I'm going to log into Road Trippers. I'm going to... There it is, Road Trippers. Plan your trip. We're already logged in because it, it keeps us logged in. I've got it set up to keep us logged in. So when you're in here, there's a lot of different things you can do. But we're going to go in and go to our home page. And so you can customize a little bit. Like see here, we've got Zephyr Travels on the home page, and you know our previous trips that we've put together, and then they also do trips for you. You can see here this ultimate uh, Route 66 trip is is a suggested trip by uh, Road Trippers, but you can also look here. This is basically how I did our 2022 trip before I, I paid for the more advanced version of Road Trippers. And you can see down here that each section of the trip has seven places. This is our Lebanon, Tennessee trip and four places. I kept it kind of simple. But now you can look here. This is a California trip from last year. So let's go into the California trip and look at the detail of it. As you can see there was 55 places that we visited. And as we open it up, it brings up the main screen which shows our full trip, all the different stops, all 55 of them. And then over here on the left in the column, it has all the stops that are on that trip. And what's nice is you can add things to the trip and then actually take them out. So in this case here, Wichita, Kansas. Now we wanted to go to Wichita, Kansas. So when I was 
planning out the trip, I put that in as a waypoint as a destination I wanted to go. But that's not where we stayed. We stayed in Cheney State Park. So once I found a place to stay near Wichita, I kept Wichita on the trip, but I took it out of the route so that my trip planning is more based on the route of where we're going and where we're staying versus the places we want to go visit. But the places we want to visit are in there too. Looks gonna, again, here's Santa Fe. Santa Fe was a place we wanted to visit, but it wasn't where we're going to stay. Um, we stayed at Hyde Memorial State Park in Santa Fe. Carlsbad Bad Canyon, place we wanted to visit, and we didn't stay there. Same thing with the Living Desert Zoo and Gardens, place we wanted to visit when planning the trip, but we stayed at Bottomless Lake uh, State Park in New Mexico. Also, Roswell was near there. So, in this case, we have this location that we stayed at and three places we wanted to visit. What's nice, too, is, is as you pick these, they highlight themselves on the map. So, you can then zoom in on the map. This up here. And if you notice, now, like here, we're zoomed in around the city of Phoenix. And there are five places that we stayed in the Phoenix area. So it gets now you get an idea how the trip looks when you plan it all out. <clears throat> but what's nice about road trippers is I don't actually plan the whole trip at one time. I actually plan the trip in sections, and I only plan out maybe four, six, or eight weeks in advance, depending on what we want to do. So let's go into a new trip, and we will look at that. Okay, so we're going to start, plan a road trip. Click here. We're going to start from Rochester, New York. There we go, Rochester, New York. And we got to put a destination in. So for our trip... I'm going to put um, Rock Springs, Wyoming. And I'm picking that because that's the um, 2023 Airstream International Rally location. And also what's nice is the trip's auto-save. So you don't have to worry about as you go along if you exit out of it and make changes to it. They're always going to be there. And so a straight shot two rock, rock strings from Rochester, New York, is 1,800 miles. But this is our winter trip, and that's keeping us up in the more northern sections of the country, so it's going to be snowy. So we don't want to do that. We want to get someplace where it's warm. So let's add a waypoint. Uh, let's see, how about Myrtle Beach? If I can spell it right. There we go, Myrtle Beach State Park. So let's add that to the trip. And now, scroll this over a little bit. <clears throat> now the trip's taking us down to Myrtle Beach, but then it's taking us back up. But, you know, we want to go to the Tampa RV show this year too. So let's add that to the trip. So we're going to add Tampa, Florida. And now it's taking us down to Florida and swing us back up. I really don't want to do this northern part. I really like to stay more south. Well, we, we really like Arizona. So let's throw Phoenix in there. There we go. Phoenix, Arizona. And one thing you'll notice, it adds the waypoints into the trip where they should be. It, it's trying to map out your trip for you and trying to give you the most economical way to get there. So now we're starting to look like a trip. You know, we've got some places in here that we like, um, but there's still a few more. Uh, let's see, let's see what else. Well, we ought to go to some national parks on this trip. So let's add a waypoint. Let's add Rocky Mountain National Park. There we go, Rocky Mountain National Park. Good, now it's gonna take us over into Colorado, which is good. And takes us through Utah, so well, this is good. I mean, we've got a nice laid out trip here. Um, we might as well throw Rochester in at the end. 
go Rochester, New York. And, and now in this case, it threw Rochester, New York in at the beginning because that's logical where it would make sense. But I'm going to throw it down here at the end because that's our return. So now we've got this whole one lap of the U.S. going here where we're going to head down along the eastern shoreboard, down into Florida, down to Tampa. Then we'll take a trip across um, the lower section, the lower uh, southern states, through the southern section of Texas, up into New Mexico, it takes us into Arizona, Utah, Colorado, up into Wyoming, and then back through Nebraska, Iowa, Chicago. This looks pretty good. Um, Mount Rushmore would be neat to see. I see that right here. That would be a nice place to make, maybe make a stop. So we're at a waypoint for Mount Rushmore. And it threw that in right after Wyoming. And yeah, this is looking pretty good. Now, I'm, there's more we're going to add to this. But at this point, we've kind of got the rough layout of how we want our trip to look. It's, it's going to be a lap of the U.S., we're going to hit some a lot of southern states, but we're actually going to come up and take some of these northern states that we've never been. If you remember looking at our, our map on the outside of the trailer, we've got a lot of blank spaces across the northern um, U.S. that we really haven't visited, especially in the, the central and Midwest. So this is going to take care of a lot of that. We were also missing states down here, Alabama, Mississippi. You know, we've never really done anything there, so there's an opportunity to visit those states. It's been a little time. Okay, so now the next step to this is I'm going to start looking at this trip, this mapping, and I'm going to look, start looking at the mileage. And, you know, obviously these mileages are a lot longer than what we want to drive per day. So we need some stops in between. And if I look at this first one, Rochester to Myrtle Beach, you know, it's 831 miles. Now, typically we're going to be leaving in December, so it's going to be cold weather. And I want to get as far south as I can before I stop. So that first day, I'm going to make it a long travel day. So I'm willing to do maybe up to 500 miles. That's about a 10-hour day drive. I'm not going to do a 13-hour day drive. And I'm also going to be looking at this from the perspective of whatever this tells me. It doesn't include stops, food, anything like that. So we need to make sure that we take that into account a little bit as we go along and map this trip out. <clears throat> so I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, I don't know, maybe Richmond, Ashland, uh, Virginia would be a good waypoint. So let's throw in Ashland, which is just outside of uh, um, Richmond. Let's see where. Now in this case it's not it's actually suggesting the city. Interesting. It's throwing in places to stay, which is interesting. Um, all right, let's try Richmond. Richmond, Virginia. Let's try this again with a quick spelling. Richmond. There we go. Richmond, Virginia. So if I throw in Richmond, Virginia in there, now it's recalculated my driving, and this puts me at eh, about 500 miles an eight hour drive that's really going to be rv time 10 hours because you're going to stop for lunch but there's not going to be a lot of campgrounds along this route that we can stop at on our way here so this is actually going to work out pretty well but now i need to find a place to stay so my next tool that i like to use is campanium when you, with campanium one of the neat things about it what i really like about it is that it is all user defined. So people who've been to these places put their opinion in your, it's very similar to looking at, um, when you go on Amazon and you, you look at a product and you scroll down and you read the reviews of what people thought of that product that actually bought it. That's really what you uh, are getting here. So we're gonna search for Richmond, Virginia. And so now it's bringing us up a listing of different places to stay. And 
I like this. So we you know we've got them on a map. We can see you know where, places we could possibly stay in park. Um, here's a Cracker Barrel that we could stay at. Another Cracker Barrel, Walmart. Considering this is going to be just an overnight, these are probably the places I want to look at. But I could actually go in here and go category, and we could look at public. Um, places. So we could look for campgrounds. This would be like state parks and such. So here's Pocahontas State Park just outside of Richmond. We could probably go in there and stay there if we wanted. I don't know. And if we wanted to get more detail on it, let's drill in to it. And we can look at, okay, there's 129 sites. The sites are all gravel. They take reservations. Maximum stay is 14 days. And as you kind of look through here, you can see some of the reviews. This is one thing I really like about Campenium, is that it allows you to see um, cell service. And that's important because, you know, we use a cell service for our internet connection. And it's nice to know when we get there, are we going to be able to stream TV at night? So here I can see Verizon's got four bars, AT&T AT &T has three. Very usable cell service there. And this is based on people's recommendations. So now we look through here and we see people's reviews of the campground. And I don't, you know, they're going to put in here what they think of it. They're going to put some detail in about the campground, that you know, of their experience. Then they're going to do some rating on it. So access, location, cleanliness, on-site, quality, noise, and what cell service they had. Now also, they put in here that it had a nightly rate of $5. I'm not quite sure about that. That seems kind of low. Especially when I look down at the next one, it says $45. Next one down there says $47, $40. $40. I'm thinking this is a $40 a night place. And it probably depends if you're um, local to Virginia, and maybe there's an in-state uh, rate that you can pay, or maybe um, there's a access card, you know, like a national park card, or maybe a state park card that you can use and save money on. You also get to see what sites the people stayed on, um, if they put that information here. So this one down here says that they paid $40 a night, they stayed five nights, and they're in site 100. You also get an idea when they, when they reviewed it, so hopefully that's kind of close by to when maybe they stayed there, maybe not. Um, you know, and then you can read their view. They stayed there for five days and it was beautiful. Um, they were originally booked on site 17, but it turned out to be way too small or way too shaded for Starlink. That's it. Um, and it had too many squirrels or any corns at their solar panels. Interesting. Um, so that gives you a pretty good idea of the park. There's also a section in here. Yeah. So there's an amenities section here that tells you about the park or what hookups they have so they do have 50 and 20 amp uh, and 30 amp hookups um, there's water available um, big rig um, capable uh, you know picnic tables fire rings there's a picnic area there's trails so it gives you a pretty good idea on that um, pets it uh, looks like it allows you to have pets there so if this was a candidate to stay at, I could click into the official website here and look at the campground. And from here, I can most likely create a, a reservation. And so I can reserve this uh, campground and add it to my trip, which I think is pretty cool. And so let's see. Let's just add it. Let's make this a, a stop on our trip. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. I'm actually not going to make the reservation while we do it here. But let's go back to the Road Trippers and add a waypoint. Control V, Pocahontas State Park. There we go. We, now we're going to add that to the trip. And so now that we have a location in the Richmond area, I'm going to take Richmond off as a waypoint. And so what that's going to do, it's going to tell me my driving distance from Rochester, New York to um, Pocahontas State Park, which is 50, uh, 505 miles. And so almost a nine hour drive. So that's gonna be a long day, but that's doable. And what's nice is it puts us in a good position 
to make this drive down to Myrtle Beach. Um, and so we've actually got Myrtle Beach State Park in here as a place to stay. Maybe that's where we want to stay, maybe it's not. But you get the idea. Now we've, we're now looking at driving distances. If we look here to Tampa, from Myrtle Beach to Tampa, that's another 500 drive, 500 mile drive. So we're probably not going to make that drive on one day. We're probably going to look for something in between. And let's see. We we'll probably want to find something closer. Maybe I'm zoom in here. Maybe in uh, Georgia. So let's look at Brunswick, Georgia. And I'm going to go back into Campanium. And I'm going to park. Brunswick, Georgia. Here we go. And so we're going to do a search here. And now it's bringing up potential places. Maybe we just want an overnight spot. We don't really want a campground. So we got these P's here, which are parking. So this is a Flying J uh, Travel Center. So that could be our campsite for the night. I mean, we could pull into the Travel Center um, there may be a rest area nearby. You know, we can kind of scroll through here. We can also go in and filter by price. So, you know, these are overnights. I don't want to spend more than $30. I actually don't even want to spend $30. So anything that's cheap, I'm going to do because we're only going to be there tonight. We're going to pull in, leave the next morning early to finish our trip. <clears throat> so this gives us a couple of choices. We've got a crackle barrel here. So... Brunswick, um, Georgia Cracker Barrel. That seems to work. Let's add that to the trip. Hmm. So it's not finding that right away. That's not working. We're not finding it that way. So let's put in Brunswick. Okay, so we got Brunswick, Georgia. Let's see. We'll throw that on the trip here. So at least we've got that. We know there's a crackle barrel there. Um, we're not finding it, unfortunately. But it could, you can see where it did a nice job of breaking our driving right about in half. So we, from Myrtle Beach to Brunswick to Tampa, you know, we're, we're now looking at 250 mile drives. So about a five hour day, perfect. Um, you know, we'd go an eight hour day, we'd go 350 miles, we'd go another 100 on top of that if we needed to, a couple more hours. But this is perfect. That way we can, you know, get up, leave around nine o'clock. Um, and get there in the mid-afternoon, especially in the fall time of the year when the days are getting shorter. Um, I wish I could find that cracker barrel on here, but unfortunately it's not working for me. You can also drill in on these. So what's, what's nice about this is I can put a date in here. If I make a reservation someplace, I can put that reservation detail in here. And we can, you know, look at this, which is nice. So as you can see, as you can see, Campenium is, is a much better um, tool to find campgrounds than road trippers. So the two applications complement each other very nicely. And that's what I like about this. Road trippers does a really good job of mapping out your trip, showing you the distances between locations, and getting you down the road very nicely. And Campenium is very good at searching out and finding good places to stay. We've had really good luck with the campgrounds we've chosen from Campanium. We've never been surprised by walking into a campground saying, well, this isn't what we expected. You can see here how using these two apps together does a really good job at planning out a trip, giving you some flexibility. As I've said, I typically only plan out six weeks maybe four to six weeks um, if there's some place we know we're going to we need to be at a certain time i will plan that and put that in there um, but for the most part 
I try to keep some level of flexibility into these trips. If I know an area is going to be really busy, I'll plan that in advance. If I know there's going to be places where we're going that are not going to be that busy, I may plan that on a shorter lead time. Hopefully you've got a really good understanding of what the tools I use for trip planning are and how I go about doing it. If you have any questions on these tools, definitely leave me a comment. I will do my best to answer them. All right, at this point, I'm going to throw it back outside to Diane and Randy, um, and we will close the video there. Well, you can see how we how I like to plan the trips. I really like using road trippers for the mapping part of this, but I don't use road trippers to actually get me there. I will use the GPS in our truck or our, the mapping on our phone and our do, you know, that day's drive. But road trippers at least gives me the planning of, you know, what how far do I need to drive from point A to point B? And I also like Campenium because I like the reviews. I like to be able to look at the campgrounds and see what other people have thought of them before um, I go there. So I have a really good idea and that's worked out really well for us. We've been able to roll into campgrounds and be very comfortable with them. And we knew not every campground was going to be a five star campground and some of them were probably a three or a two and a half. But we knew that going into it so we were prepared for that and we knew, right. knew what we were getting into. Right, right. Well, I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, if you guys want to see more about our trip to California, we do have a series of videos and a playlist that, that I will reference up here. But if you'd like to hear more about traveling in California and maybe hear like an overview of that, put a comment down below because we would love to do a video on that maybe in the future to kind of talk more about traveling in California just in case you guys are thinking about going that way. Right. If you like this video, then what should they do, Diane? Please give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. And make sure to hit the bell for notifications. We post new videos on a weekly basis, and we'd love to have you guys follow along in our journey. And so until the next time, we will see all of you down the road. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Let's not waste time. Take this if you like this video, what should they do? They should hit the... You, you mix these up. <laughs> That's all right. Start again. <laughs>